Good morning, Facebook and YouTube viewers. We're so glad to have you with you, have us with you on this beautiful, beautiful spring Sunday morning. It's just gorgeous. Um, thank you for being with us and God bless. We begin our service with a Thanksgiving of baptism. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We thank you, risen Christ, for the water of our baptism, where you made us new, leading us from death to life and from tears to joy. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends the reading. Ginger's been providing our devotions for our monthly council meetings. Thank you, Ginger. She uh, picks them out because she is an avid devotion follower. I think you have many, right? And um, the one she picked out for Thursday night for council was from our daily bread. Um, I can see that online. Do you have it in print, printed form? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty popular and widespread, well-known devotional, Our Daily Bread, and I, I recommend it. So, I'd like to share it with you. According to a Chinese legend, when Sai Wen lost one of his prized horses, his neighbor expressed sorrow for his loss. But Sai Wen was unconcerned. He said, who knows if it may be a good thing for me. Surprisingly, the lost horse returned home with another horse. As the neighbor congratulated him, Sai Wang said, who knows if it may be a bad thing for me. As it turned out, his son broke his leg when he rode on the new horse, and this seemed like a misfortune until the army arrived at the village to recruit all able-bodied men to fight in the war. Because of his son's injury, he wasn't recruited, which ultimately 
could have spared him from death. The author of the devotional then wrote, this ancient wisdom that has a close parallel to Ecclesiastes 6 verse 12 teaches us, when times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this, God has made the one as well as the other. Each day offers new opportunities, joys, struggles, and suffering. And God, and as God's beloved children, we can trust he's with us in all the events of our lives and promises his loving care. As soon as I heard this devotion, I couldn't help but think how appropriate it was for our Thursday night council meeting, as well as it inspired me for this sermon. But before I speak to that, let's put ourselves in the apostles' shoes and see how it applies to their lives. We hear in Luke that Jesus appears and stands among his disciples saying, Peace be with you. Imagine their surprise. Jesus died, and now they think they're seeing a ghost. Jesus addresses their fear and doubts by telling them to look at his hands and his feet, to touch him, and to share a meal together. Jesus is clearly telling them he's not a ghost. His resurrected body has flesh and bones and he even eats a piece of broiled fish with them. Go and do that. These actions not only confirm the physicality of Jesus' body, but also demonstrate his presence among them. But they are afraid. How then is Jesus', Jesus death and now his appearance a good thing for them? What God accomplishes by raising Jesus from the tomb and defeating death demonstrates that God's love is more powerful than anything in the universe. Although not immediate, the disciples' sadness turns to joy and they have peace knowing that Christ is always with them. And for our council meeting, well, I have no doubt that our council members and all of you believe in Jesus' resurrection as we travel through this pandemic. But while this is good news, sometimes we forget when making difficult decisions, like during this transition time of vaccination and highly contagious mutants, that we must consider what's best for the health of the entire congregation, as well as helping to stop the infection in our community. What may appear as bad news of not opening our name to worship may indeed be good news of saving lives. I had not really thought of it that way until I received my first vaccination. It was in Carlisle and the pharmacist, who I did not know, asked me, well, how are things going? I'm sure just making small talk. I replied, can you believe that we're still worshiping outside in our parking lot through the car's FM radio? I still don't know why I said that to him. I don't know if he knew that I was a pastor, and I certainly didn't know if he was a member of a church. But he replied, what I know is that you're saving lives. As a church, we have journeyed through a long, challenging year with this pandemic. And COVID at first, and rightly so, appears only to be bad news as it drove us into isolation at home. But if there's any good news in this, not only about the vaccines that have come so early to us, thanks be to God, but that Christ surprised us as we met on Zoom, 
He surprised us with new ideas, with patience and creativity, with his life-changing words of grace, love, and ministry empowerment. Here are a few examples that came to mind how Jesus shaped our resurrection story, which is ongoing at Mount Zion. You know, when I first had the epiphany to have a parking lot worship service, I think I read an article about a Philadelphia church doing it. And I called up Rick Goodman and said, can, can we get an FM transfer for our parking lot? And it's then that Rick and I both discovered by doing research that there wasn't one transmitter available in the whole United States because I wasn't the only one with that idea. They're actually manufactured overseas, and those imports were being blocked. Rick said to me, I'm sorry, Pastor, they're just impossible to get. And just when we were giving up on the idea, Rick Goodman was inspired to call a friend of his and talk about our situation here. And he said, Rick, I have a transmitter. You just have to build it. <laughs> And Rick, five hours later, built the transmitter. He's not here with us today, but I, I'm just so amazed, and I tell him all the time, how Christ inspired all of us uh, to have his parking lot worship. And instead of canceling our annual Free Mile Fun run and walk, this is our fifth year, and it benefits Sea Park, we were inspired to set up a GoFundMe page and produce a video with Seed Park. And we ended up raising 50% more in do donations than in 2019. And it was a difficult decision this year not to make and sell Easter eggs. But with record soup sales and probably a little money in the bank, we were able to provide Thanksgiving and Christmas meals to Monroe School families in need. And as our worship team, we dreaded that the weather would dictate attendance for our parking lot worship. But all of you and more of you were, had been inspired to show up, not only on beautiful days like today, but in the cold and the rain. Right, Ginger? <laughs> Even on Christmas Eve and Palm Sunday. And we have welcomed visitors from our churches who worship with us outside and are here today in our parking lot because it's a safer alternative to worshiping inside. Can I have a honking amen on that one? <laughs> yes, amen. Nice to have you with us, Governors. Just think, if God can raise Jesus from the dead, why can't God do and help us as we continue our resurrection story? What can't God do? You see, God's love is more powerful than all things, including death itself. And therefore, nothing is beyond our reach as his disciples. Good thing, because just like the first disciples, we too are commissioned to creatively take Christ's life-giving message of resurrection, new hope, and new life, and share it with our neighbors, the community, and the world. And we don't have to wait until the pandemic's over. We do that now, remembering that when times are good, to be happy. But when times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. Each day offers new opportunities, joy, struggles, and suffering. And God's beloved children, we can trust he's with us in all events of our lives and promises his loving care. May God bless our ongoing Easter resurrection story with Christ. Amen. Uh, appropriately, we'll sing the next hymn of Lord, You Give the Great Commission, as they are and we too are.
Commission. It's with one voice, 756 if you have a hymnal. If not, it's printed in your bulletin on page four, and we'll sing verses one, two, and five. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we pray for our own congregation and for all the churches of our neighbors around the globe. O oh God, our Savior, bless your people and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For the earth, we pray, for the well-being of land, plants, and animals wild and tame. For the birds, especially the songbirds, whose numbers are decreasing. And for this week's Earth Day, that good will come from the worldwide observance. O oh God, our Creator, restore your handiwork and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For peace and justice, we pray. For the liberation of all who are oppressed. For an end to ethnic and economic prejudice and especially for all court cases in this and every land. O oh God, our refuge, protect the vulnerable and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For all, who, for all who are sick and suffering, for those who have no access to the coronavirus vaccines, for the children afflicted with the virus variants, for everyone who fears receiving medical advice and assistance, for those who live with chronic pain, and especially for those we name here before you, aloud or in our hearts.
O God, our caregiver, heal the sick and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. We remember before you all the witnesses of the resurrection, the saints of old, those who have died by violence or by the coronavirus, and especially our relatives and friends. O oh God, our resurrection, give us life now and forever. Have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. Receive these prayers into your heart of mercy for the sake of the Holy Righteous One, Jesus Christ, our wondrous Redeemer. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our last hymn for today is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. It's on uh, page three of your bulletin. I'm sure if you Google it at home, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing, you'll find the verses and we'll sing one, two, and five. Now go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.